Okay, everybody. Um, let's talk through what we've got here. So I've cranked through some of the calculations. So here we had the dimensions of the bag times two kernels per linear centimeter. So that comes out to 10,400 kernels. Um, I counted the, in the milliliter and then the volume of the whole bag. So 19 kernels and five milliliters times 960 total milliliters. So that gives me 3,648, quite a bit smaller. Uh, this one, I, I had it upside down. Here I've got volume per kernel of 0 0.065 milliliters per kernel. So to use that conversion factor, I got to take my 960 milliliters and then flip this one over. Sorry, this is hard to see, but it's a kernel for 0 0.065 milliliters, that should be. Anyway, you get uh, 14,668, kind of all over the place here, 10,000, 3,000, 14,000. And with the mass, I had uh, the mass of the bag um, subtracted from the mass of the bag with the kernels in it, and then times 10 kernels was 1.0. 71 grams and I got 5,000 there. So kind of in the middle. So uh, I think you can think through now which one is maybe the most accurate versus least accurate. Which method would you choose and why? And I think the thing to think about is how certain can you be of how many digits in each one? So and measuring the bag, we've got it to two digits, maybe uncertainty in the units place. Um, same thing here, this five milliliters, maybe it was four, maybe it was six in the grad cylinder. Um, a quarter of a centimeter um, for the radius of a kernel. Uh, maybe I've got one or two significant figures here. And then with the masses here, I've got three, so when I do this subtraction, I've got three, and here I've got three. So think about how many significant digits you have and what that says about which one is gonna be the most accurate. And I think then it kind of gives it away here. The conclusion you're gonna to come to is that the weighing procedure using mass ends up being much more accurate than using volume. Okay. Think about uh, why, and and this is why then as chemists we use something called Avogadro's number, which relates to the number of particles in a given mass. And we don't use volume um, when we're measuring out things typically, but we use mass. Mass is much more accurate, um, and it works well because then it doesn't matter uh, what density you have, um, for what um, form the substance is in, etc. So here, for example, um, just to introduce Avogadro's number. Uh, by definition, the number of atoms present in one mole of carbon is Avogadro's number of atoms. Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, which seems like a very strange number, but the reason why we chose that number is because one mole of carbon atoms weighs 12 grams. Now it's a little bit higher than 12 even because we have different isotopes, but the most common isotope you might remember is carbon 12. I've got a periodic table down here. So carbon has six protons, then if you also have six neutrons, then that's tw that is actually exactly 12 grams for a mole of carbon. So that's how we define Avogadro's number. When you have 12 grams of carbon, it gives you this many atoms of carbon. And so the average, because of the other isotopes, is a little bit higher, but the, the weight, the molar mass of any element is recorded in grams per mole. So to understand this a little bit more, let's look at these conceptual questions. So how many animals are in a dozen animals? 12. 
which represents more animals, a dozen elephants or a dozen cats? Well, they're both 12, right? So they're both the same. Which weighs more, a dozen elephants or a dozen cats? They weigh the same, right? No, obviously not. A dozen elephants weighs more because each elephant is heavier. How many elephants are in a mole of elephants? Well, it doesn't matter that it's elephants. It's still 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd because a mole is Avogadro's number. A mole of things is Avogadro's number of things. Which represents more animals? A mole of elephants or a mole of cats? The same. Which weighs more? A mole of elephants or a mole of cats? And the mole of elephants, because again, each elephant is heavier. So the connection we're trying to make here is a dozen things is always 12 things. It doesn't matter how heavy they are. Um, and so a mole of things is always 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd things. It doesn't matter what they are or how heavy they are. A mole of carbon is that many atoms and it weighs that much. A mole of sodium will be that same number of atoms. But the weight will be different because sodium is different from carbon. And to figure that out, you have to go to the periodic table. And it's a little bit hard to see here, but the number is 22.99. So we would put that in there. That's how many grams are in a mole of sodium. Similarly for copper, it's still going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But then you have to look up copper, and it's 63.55. So that's how many grams. A mole of water would still be Avogadro's number of molecules now. Okay, We're not talking about atoms anymore. We're talking about molecules. But as far as mass goes, now it's H2O, so we'd have to add up. 2 times the hydrogen, so 2 times 1.008, and 1 times oxygen. Oxygen is 16.00. So that ends up being 18.016 grams per mole. All right, well, that's as much as I'm going to tell you. See if you can do these practice problems, and then we'll call it a day, and I'll see you Monday.